Welcome back to Tribe Fan Fest. Jason Kipnis is taking the time out of his day to stop by and uh, say hello. Jason, uh, this has got to be kind of cool, man. You come back, and it's, I mean, it's January, and look at how many fans are here. This is fun. This is cool to get a chance out here and meet all the people who are out there supporting us during the season. So right. it's a fun experience. And us. I know for you, didn't you hit up a, you hit up a middle school or something yesterday? Didn't you we did. To... We did. We went to the Bath Middle School. Uh, we got to walk around each classroom and talk to them for a little bit, have some Q&A. So it was all a good right. experience. This area I came up in, I should have yeah. known. Now, now, what were some of the questions that they asked you, and how how because I heard they were asking your favorite cupcake. <laughs> there, yeah, they had, they had some interesting ones. Favorite cupcake, favorite color. They, one of them asked which political party I was. Really? A fifth grader asked me which which party I was in. Did you not answer? The teacher cut her off. She's like, uh, we're not asking those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, I've got some questions for you. What do you do in the off season after? Because I think you, I think fans, we're getting to know you a little bit better. Obviously, I, I felt bad for you two years ago. We really were getting going. We were getting into the into the run, and you pull your hamstring. I've had hamstring injuries. They're the worst to have. You can't even get to your car and drive no. half the time. That had to be frustrating. Then last year, you guys really get going, and it just seemed like the steam was let out probably in early August, July. What do you do for yourself as a player not to go through that again, but also for the team not to go through that again? You know what? All you can do right now is look at it as not as such. You can just use it as a lesson pretty much. Um, you take what you can out of it. You take the positives you can out of it. Uh, it was horrible to go through. I know every player, every coach on the staff wishes for probably doesn't wish that upon any team. It was just it was one of those things that no one had an answer for. Um, but we can use that to our advantage now that we've been there. We know what it's like. We can hopefully shorten it up if we ever do see signs of it coming again and just work our way better to get not ever have again. Is it easier to say now that you've been through it, hey, we were a young team? I mean, because I'll admit, I do the post game show sometimes, and, and the emotion after game is. How the heck did we lose? Why did this happen? Why did... But then I look at the roster, and I go, well, geez, we're relying on guys. And I know you can't say that during the season, but when you look outside of it, you say, hey, that may have been a great learning block for us going forward. That's what I mean by it, where I think it's just a learning block for us. Uh, we might not have had those guys who were 8, 10 years in the big leagues who know what, who's been there before who can say, hey, this is how you get out of this. Let's put the All foot right. down and let's stop this right now. We had guys who... Their answers were, hey, i got to be the guy to get us out of this slump. And yeah. that can actually just be like quicksand and make it even worse for us. So, what, yeah. What was your initial reaction when you heard Terry Francona was going to be the manager of the Cleveland Indians? You know what? I was excited. I was actually uh, really looking forward to him. Um, he's already branched out and made a great effort to establish some relationships with all the guys on the team. Uh, I mean, you ask around to any players that have played for him, they love the guy. The guy brings nothing but... Uh, a winning mindset, a great attitude, and a, a positive place to play the game. So I think me and along with the rest of the guys are excited. What did you think when you saw the team go out and aggressively get Nick Swisher? I know there's been so much talk, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, but there's been so much talk in the town of the Indians don't get the big-name player. They don't get this. For them to be aggressive and to go get a guy like that that you guys can put in the middle of the lineup, I'm not saying in front of you or behind you. i got my own idea where I'd put him. <laughs> but, and I know and Nick's got a great attitude, too. Yeah. Nick's a really yeah. cool guy. Um, but he's the type of guy that seems like he'll fit in your guys' clubhouse. How cool was it to see them go after and get a guy like that? You know, it shows us that they want to win. And you know what? And you could say, and I'm sure there's a fan's perspective and even some other guys in the clubhouse, but we're not, we weren't so sure if it was like they wanted to win every single year and right now. Um, getting guys like him, Mark Reynolds, getting guys like uh, Brett Myers bringing in Trevor Bauer, those trades, uh, it shows that they're really taking a step forward and they're wanting to win this year. You plan on doing long toss with Trevor Bauer? No, yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I can hit it back to him, if I can have a bat, I'll You're hit it back to play him. Play pepper yeah, with him and just about it. Back. I mean, is that amazing? I mean, the guy throws... We got a visitor. Oh, we already... Oh, yeah, we do. This guy follows me everywhere. <laughs> Look at... The, What's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> Can I tell you a story about, about this guy right Please. here? We go to a school, and we go to a beautiful school in Rocky River this week, <laughs> and I'm reading a book to him, and this guy's going up to every teacher that he can, and he's kissing them <laughs> and <laughs> making out with them. And, and then the kids don't want to hear me read the book. They just want to see more of it. They want to see more of it. So next time we go to read a book, I'm bringing you out after we're done with the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got it? No, <laughs> it's good to see Good to see whatever the pink man is, Slider. I love Slider. Slider's good peeps. Um, that threw me off of my interview. I never had, never had that happen. What do you want to work in on your game? What, what's Jason Kipnis want to do to become a better baseball player? He wants to become more consistent. Um, it's the obvious thing to say about me was the difference in splits between the first half and the second half. Um, if I knew what have, would have caused it, it would have never happened. People were like, what happened? I was like, if I had an answer, it wouldn't have happened. Um, but, I mean, it's... Like I said, the whole last year, whether it's losing streak or myself personally, can just be used as a lesson and a stepping stone to get better. Yeah, um, when you go around, it's a dream for you to play this game. What has been the biggest surprise for Jason Kipnis as a big league? I mean, has there been a player or a pitcher you've gone against where you go, man, I had his picture up in my, you know what I mean? It, there's got to, what was that moment of, man, I've made it? 
Uh, you know what? Growing up a bunch, uh, growing up a bunch. I'm only 25 still right now. Uh, I watch I, I watch Pujols a lot. Okay. So I mean, he was in the Cardinals, and so the Cubs always hated him. Right. Always hated the Cardinals, but uh, he was always on TV. I think going to spring training and getting to first base and having him stand there and start to talk with him, I was like, it, it, it became more real. Right. That's cool. Speaking of Chicago, you're how. You always play well, it seems, when you go back to Chicago to play, which I find is to be really yeah. cool. Do you put more pressure on yourself, or is it just, is it just happening? It's, I, well, I <laughs> hopefully it's just happening because, uh, no, it's always fun to go back home um, when you have your family, your grandparents, your cousins, your best friends are all there rooting you on. Um, you want to say it, it's the same game and nothing's changed, but you have them in the stands, and you always – you. I mean, you want to go 4-4 four, four every game, but you really want to go 4-4 four, four right, when you're home in right. front of them. And so I've been very fortunate to have some good success there. Have you thought about playing here in Cleveland that you're kind of lucky that you can still root for the Blackhawks? See, I follow you on Twitter. So I, and I, But, you know, I'm going to be honest because I'm around athletes all the time, and I think it's cool that you can become a pro athlete, but you still are excited for your teams. Now, I know fans will get they, caught up in it sometimes. Cleveland fans. They, <laughs> they're some proud people, and yes, I love it. But so are Chicago. Absolutely. Right? And they're like, oh, well, you play for Cleveland. you got to root for Cleveland. I was like... If they're not playing for Chicago, I'm rooting for Cleveland. Bingo. Absolutely, I will root for Cleveland. But you want loyalty? Well, I've been watching these guys for 25 years. It's not going to change all yeah, of a sudden. I mean, right. loyalty then. Now, speaking of them. that, you're getting, some, you're getting some loyal fans as well. You're becoming one of the more popular guys on the team. How do you not let that take over you and still stay the same guy? You know what? Because the popularity, the they're liking me, and I haven't changed a thing. They're liking me for just what I've brought to the table. Um I'm excited to play in front of these fans every single game. And I told them up there, I was like, I don't even really hide it that much. No. I'm excited to get on that field, and I'm excited to wear that Indians jersey and play as hard as I can for them. And they love me for that, and I love them right back. They love you because you play with enthusiasm. You run out. And I'm, I don't I'm, know any other way to play. I'm being serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I, and I've watched players. Sometimes that changes once, and, and it doesn't seem to change you, whether it's running through the bag at first, mm -hmm. whether it's going deep in the hole and throwing a ball you probably shouldn't throw to first. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but see what I mean? You're, you're like us, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We can walk, we watch you, and we go, this guy reminds me of how I would be playing out that's, in the backyard. I mean, that's just the way I was brought up, the way I was taught to play the game. If I, if a ball's to your left and you can get to it, you get to that ball. There's no, nothing goes through your head where, like, oh, I might need to jog at this one or something like right. that. You get to that ball. All right, spring training's right around the corner. I won't keep you much longer. We appreciate you coming up here. Um, we got to work on getting Terry Francona on Twitter. He told me well, he said he won't do it. Do you think we can get him? I think we're going to talk him into it. It's, he left his phone up here, but he took it when you got it. <laughs> it's it's tough. I'm uh, I mean, I'm always on Twitter, but it's addicting. It is. And I, I don't ever want to be that guy who pushes someone to get on Twitter because they don't know what's coming to it. It is addicting, isn't it? They you check your phone every yeah every five minutes. Every time uh, we go to break, I'm like, what they say about? If me? you start, yeah, I'll tweet with you and I'll phone with you. But I don't want to be that reason that they're yeah. checking their phone every. But five it's got to be hard as a baseball player because look, you're going to go over four, or for five, and there's always that one idiot that's going when you drive. You know what I mean? And like, and just you gotta, one. You know, there's well, only I'm one. I wish there's nice. only one. I know. But how do you play that off and not pay attention? Because you are fun on Twitter, and there's days where it's like, it's, all right, I cover the Browns. Yeah. And I'm around these guys all the time, and, like, I know what people say to me. And then I see what they say to these guys, and I'm like, how are you my my biggest fan? They're ruthless. They're ruthless. <laughs> yeah. They don't hold anything but back. But then they see you here, and they're hugging you. Now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then they go back in 140 characters. They tear right, me down. Right, but right. But you know what? The main thing you got to realize, especially not only in baseball but in Twitter, you can't please everyone. Right. It's hard. You want to try to – you want to put out the – the good image and all that stuff, but in the end, you really can't please someone. There's always going to be someone out there who's not going to like what you have to say. Just be who you are. Tell them what you're uh, – they usually put it up underneath. Just tell them your handle. We're at, uh, we're at the JK underscore kid. Um, I try to keep it as interesting as I can, so hopefully it's you, a good follow. You do a good job. All right, how many – this will tell me all I need to know. How many followers do you have, Jason? I think we are up to around 44,000. 44, not We're bad. getting there. We're we got to get you – we got to get you to the million. Oh, man. It can happen. Uh, we we'll get, I don't you, know to if I got that we'll get you to the All Star stay. game. We yeah, can make. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, I'm all for that. There you go. Hey, have a great year. Stay Thank healthy, you very man. Much. Appreciate you have a good that. training camp. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you, Andre. All right.